Genesis, Lord God, 24 and 40, Lord God. You said that you would send a prosperity angel to go before us and prosper our way. And we decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that the prosperity angel goes before us, oh God, and our way is prosperous. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that we will run through a troop and we will leap, oh God, even over every wall. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we declare today that our praise, Father, it goes forth, oh God, as a hammer, oh God, and breaks in pieces, oh God, every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of grief, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that all, oh God, great car clothes stripped off of your people today, and we declare today a divine exchange, the spirit of praise, oh God, for the spirit of heaviness, oh God, the oil of joy, for the spirit of mourning, we loose into this atmosphere today, a spirit of high praise, a spirit of celebration, a spirit of rejoicing, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and we declare today that every ear, oh Lord, is open, Father, to hear the sound, to hear the sound, Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, your word declares, blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. And we declare today a sound, oh God, of deliverance. We declare today a sound of the abundance of rain. We declare today a sound, oh God, even, oh God, of victory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it comes into the ears of your people today, Father. And we declare today a rejoicing even upon your people today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no devil in hell can stop us, Lord God, because we are your chosen vessels. We are your people. Lord, and we are to de 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 declare today, we are more than conquerors, Lord God, through you who loves us, oh God. And so, Father, today, we even now pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that every ear, Lord God, will be inclined to ear. Our eyes, Father God, will be even begin to see. We proclaim today, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, every eye, eye, O oh Lord, open, every ear, O oh God, open, and we declare the blessing, O oh God, even upon our ears. We declare the blessing upon our hearing, Lord God. We declare it today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare today, Father, that your word, Lord, it has free course, Father, throughout the airways, and even, Lord God, in this sanctuary, today and we declare today that the word of the Lord it goes forth unhindered and it activates faith on the inside of your people Lord God 
to receive, Father, the promises of God, to receive healing, to receive breakthrough, to receive, Father God, salvation for loved ones, oh God, to receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now, Lord God, we arise, oh God, as your kingdom people, Lord God. We arise, Father, as your kingdom people. But you said in your word, oh God, that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken by force. We loose, oh God, and activate even now, Lord, the king, oh God, within your people, Lord God, today, oh God, to get violent in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare today a violent praise, oh God, that push back, oh Lord, the enemy, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare today, Father, that our praise, it goes forth, oh God, as a two-edged sword, and it cuts, Lord God, it decapitates, Father, the head of the enemy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare today, Father, the blessing of the Lord, oh God, fall like rain, oh God, in this sanctuary, in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we open up our mouths today. We open up our mouths today. We open up our hearts today, Lord God. We open up our minds today, Father, to receive, to receive. We give you the glory today. We give you all the praise today. We acknowledge today, Father, that it is finished. It is finished. We cease, Father, from our works. And we even now, Father God, activate even the angels, oh Lord, and the angelic and the angelic host, Father, to go behalf on the oh, go behalf for us, oh God. Even for your people, Lord. Even as your word declares that the angels, Lord, they sit and wait and they hearken, Lord God, unto the word of the Lord. And we decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ that every enemy, Lord God, that's standing at our gate, Father, we declare today that they're moved in the name of Jesus Christ. We loose, so God, the angels of the Lord, even now, to marshal our land, to marshal our territory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that the angels of the Lord, they chase and beat down, Lord, every, oh God, enemy, oh God, that's standing at our gates, that hinders our breakthrough, that hinders our healing, that hinders our prosperity, that hinders, oh God, the wisdom of God that comes into your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare today that heavens are open the heavens are open and we lose a praise today Lord God that breaks Father God the brass Father God over the heavens Lord God and we declare today Father that the blessings of the Lord they overtake us in this hour. The blessings of the Lord, they overtake us in this season, Father. And we declare today, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the enemy, O oh God, cannot and will not stop us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that's why we praise the name of the Lord. That's why we give glory unto the Lord. The word of the Lord says, I will call upon the name of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. And so, Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we call and praise the name of Jehovah Jireh, Lord God, the God of wealth. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we even loose the word of the Lord, that wealth and riches are in our house. We loose even the word of the Lord, oh God, that there is no lack, no leanness, no scarcity, Lord God. In name among us, we call and praise the name of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals. And we declare today that healing, Lord God, as we praise, Father, healing, Lord God, it comes, oh God, in our bodies, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give praise unto the name a Jehovah Nisi, but you are a banner for us, oh God. You are a shield for us. You are the lifter of our head, Lord God. And you are our God. And so we lift unto you, oh God. Our banner, Jehovah Nisi, today. And you cover us like a garment, Lord God. And we thank you today, Father God, that you shield us, Lord God, from every, oh God, thing of the enemy. We praise you right now, Father, for you are a shield for us, Lord God. And we loose, oh God, grace, oh Lord, even upon your people today, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we loose the word of the Lord. 
you said that you would bless the righteous and with favor you would encompass us about as a shield and we decree and declare today even now that your grace oh lord it shields us father god even from the condemnation of the enemy lord god that would hinder us father from receiving the love of god we declare today even now a shield oh god upon your people today father that will block every attack of the enemy oh lord to infiltrate our mind we oh lord arise today father as the army of the lord we guard ourselves up with the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the belt of truth lord god and we take the shield of faith and we quench every fire and dark of the enemy in the mighty name of jesus christ and we say who is these uncircumcised devils that will try to rise up against the army of the lord we arise today as Judah, in the name of Jesus Christ, we send praise, O oh Lord, to go before us, in the name of Jesus Christ. And even as we praise you, Lord God, let every enemy, Lord God, be under our feet, Lord. We declare today every enemy up under our feet. So right where you at, see that enemy, see that enemy. See that enemy that's coming against you and your loved ones. See that enemy that's coming against your family. See that enemy that's coming against your health. And I want you to just praise God. Even as you begin to praise God, that enemy is going to be under your feet. He's going to flee from you. So on the count of three, open up your mouth and give God a praise.
he did it. Yes, he did, Apostle. But he did it. It didn't look like I wanted him to do it, but he did it anyway. But he did it. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes, he did. But he did it. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. You better believe it. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. Oh yes he did. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. It didn't look like I thought he was going to do it. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. I didn't know how he was going to do it. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. Now see if there's somebody in here on today, you got something on the floor. See y'all know what I'm talking about, you got something on the floor. You got something in the, in the atmosphere that you believe in God to do. And you don't know how he's going to do it. But you just believe in his infinite wisdom and power and glory this morning. You better begin to decree it in your infinite wisdom and power and glory. Oh, yes, you did. In your infinite wisdom and power and glory. Oh, yes, you did. In your infinite wisdom and power and glory. Oh, yes, you did. Because our God is very skillful. In your infinite wisdom and power and glory. Oh, yes, you did. Come on, he healed. In your infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. He released strategies in his wisdom. In his infinite wisdom and power and glory, oh yes he did. Come on, oh yes he did. Oh yes he did. Your glory goes before me. 
atmosphere. Our ushers and greeters are moving about the sanctuary right now to serve those of you that need an envelope for your giving. Those of you that are worshiping with us online, on Facebook, and on YouTube, we want you to pick up your mobile device and text the word GIVE in a dollar amount to 231-221-2160. That number again, 231-221-2160. Zero. You can also use those same means to give if you're here with us in the sanctuary. We're also putting other ways in which you can connect with the ministry, other ways that you can financially support the ministry on your screen and on our monitors. God bless your people of God. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. Everything he is. Everything he is shows up. Isn't that what y'all declare? All that he is in all of his isness (laughs) shows up on your behalf. Amen. 
Come on, people of God, stand to your feet. Let's, ex let's receive these lively worshipers. Let's agree with them and let's present a concert of worship unto the Lord Most High. God bless you. Come on, so I ain't going to provoke you to worship.
in a place all by yourself. You in a place all by yourself, Jesus. Well, the Lord says that I'm creating an atmosphere of miracles and signs and wonders in this place like never before. Even in his word, he says that no eye has seen and no ear has heard, for there shall be in the days that shall come. God says that I will flood this place with creative miracle. I see crutches that are being laid down. I see people running, running around. I see people being made whole. But God says, I'm about to blow up in this place. Even as you believe me, says the Lord, God says, even that you need faith as a mustard seed. But God says, uh, in this season that I am expanding your faith, said the Spirit of the Lord, I am increasing your faith to believe me for the impossible. Even now, just lift up your hands uh, and believe God for the super supernatural for the miracle believe God even for the faith that you need to believe for the miracle to believe for the sign for belief for the wonderful God says I have made you to be atmosphere shifters in the earth that when you walk into the room God says that you walk in with my spirit there's coming in the days that shall come and even now a spirit of boldness and a spirit of confidence that shall be upon my people and you shall arise like never before in the boldness of the Lord and in the spirit of the Lord and you shall prophesy even the apostolic atmosphere shall be shifted it shall be changed it shall be greater says the spirit of the Lord God says walk in my anointing walk in my glory walk in my confidence and walk in my boldness says the spirit of the Lord do not look back at the former things for God says that I'm doing a new thing I've already done it and all I need you to do is yield comply I walk in it and be obedient says the spirit of the living God Hallelujah. 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 Come on, right there, shout. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord, for miracles. And I even, the Lord said, there's coming a wisdom that comes from my presence, said the Lord. A wisdom, even according to his word in, in Mark chapter 6, verse number 2, that the people were astonished by the wisdom that he had, that he would show forth signs and wonders and miracles. And the Lord says, even in this hour, I'm releasing wisdom in this day and this hour that will produce signs, wonders, and miracles upon you. And the Lord said that my wisdom will come as you abide in my presence. Even as you increase your seek for me, says the Lord, then I will drop wisdom where you will even find, uh, you will even be sustained in this season, in this hour. It was my wisdom and even the faith that would even sustain the widow, even in a time of famine, says the Spirit of the Lord. So know in this hour that this is a time where I'm releasing wisdom that will come from the throne, my throne room, that will sustain you even in this hour and in the, in, even in the times to come, says the Spirit of the Lord. And even as I said in my word that man shall not live by bread alone, but you shall live by every word that proceedeth out of my mouth, says God. Does not wisdom come out of my mouth, but wisdom is in my mouth, and wisdom comes out, and even that with understanding. I am giving you clarity of the season that you're in. You will not grope in darkness no longer. I am illuminating your hour. I am illuminating your season, and I'm making everything make sense unto you, says the Lord. For I am working everything for your good, says God. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, I am turning it that my name will be glorified. I am turning it that your faith will be increased. For this is the hour that you're going to see mighty acts mighty acts come on decree it mighty acts hey mighty acts hey I am mighty mighty acts this is the hour of miracle signs and wonders this is the hour that I am displaying my power this is the hour that I am coming hard after those things that I promise you mighty acts mighty acts Miracle signs and wonders. Mighty X. Supernatural movements. Mighty X. I'm coming hard after you, sister. Mighty God. X. I'm healing your. Mighty X. I'm healing your family. Mighty X. I'm healing those things that concern you. Mighty X. I'm making it all make sense. Mighty X. Your labor is not in vain. Mighty X. I come oh, to do Lord. Mighty X. Mighty X. Mighty is my name. Mighty X. Mighty X, come on, decree it. Do you want it? Mighty X, come on. Mighty X, feel the falling from your eyes. Mighty X, he is circumcising your ear. Mighty X, I am doing miracles. Mighty X, signs and wonders. Mighty X, and the world will know that you're my son. Mighty X, Mighty X, Hallelujah. 
Come on, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah, 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 amen. God bless you. You can have your seat, amen. Come on, let's just give the worship team a hand this morning for such an awesome, awesome job. God bless you. You can have your seat. I just want to welcome everyone into the house of the Lord this morning. Welcome those of you that are attending via live stream. Uh, welcome, amen. We want to welcome you, those of you that are on Facebook and uh, YouTube, we want to just welcome you this morning into the house of the Lord. Amen. The spirit of the Lord is here this morning. His presence is here. Amen. Matter of fact, as, as the praise, praise team said, it was in the room. Amen. Before we got here, we just walked in it. We just stepped in it. Amen. We stepped into his presence. And I thank God. Amen. For his presence. Amen. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing. nothing will ever take its place. My goodness. There is such an anointing in here. Yeah, yeah. You know, God speaking prophetically about doing miracles, signs and wonders and fulfilling his word. Um, that goes right in line with the word of the Lord that God has given me um, this morning. Uh, we've been teaching on the revelation of God's love for this whole first quarter. And uh, how many have been blessed by, by this teaching? Amen. And we've been experiencing God's love. And uh, those of you that have really uh, put a demand on God's love and asked him to begin to uh, show you his love and reveal his love uh, to you. Amen. He is doing it more and more and more. And it is just amazing what happens when all of a sudden we begin to seek God uh, for his love. And one of the things that we begin to talk about is when we receive God's love, all of a sudden it, it, it causes us to be able to believe God easier for the things that we need. We understand that everything else becomes just a byproduct of his love. And so one of the things I'm going to be talking about today is the message um, that uh, we actually entitled. What did I title that message, Elder, Elder, Elder Steve? Because I ended up changing it twice. Y yeah, yeah. Why, why it's not working for you. Amen. Why it's not working for you. Why it's not working for you. Amen. You know, and I find so many people in the body of Christ saying, you know what, I tried it, but, it, but, but it's not working. You know, when I said that, my mind goes back to, you, you know, how we are as men. We don't read instructions. You know, we get stuff and, and uh, you know, we just look at it and we're like, oh, shoot, I can put that together. And we start putting it together and then we got extra parts, you know. It was like, well, they must have gave us some extra parts. We didn't really need those. You know, that pride kicks in. And then something doesn't work the way that it was designed to work. And we figured out, you know, we really did need those extra parts and where they really went. And we put it together all backwards. Yeah. Amen. The legs that were supposed to go up top, we got on the bottom. Amen. And we was like, oh, my goodness. Okay, I see it now. And then we got to do it all over again. Well, you know what? Sometimes with God, it's like that because we really don't understand and we really don't know him like we think we know him. Let me, let, me, let me say that one more time. We really don't know him like we think we know him. And one of the things that's been taking place as we have been really uh, receiving God's love and his love is being revealed unto us, we're discovering that everything that we actually needed, God already preordained and planned and gave us before we even needed it. So therefore, we had to go back and say, wow, I've been praying and asking for things that I already had when I really should have been spending more time just thanking him, amen, and learning how to receive it and become a better receiver. Amen. We've also identified that we're terrible receivers. You know, I think I use the example of how, you know, I'm always opening the door for people, but people always got to touch the door. How many experience that you go to open a door for people and then they just got to touch it, Amen. That's just like God. God has opened up doors. God's brought healing. He's brought prosperity. He's brought peace. But we just have to touch the door. 
which internally what we're doing is we're sending the message to say, you know what, I really didn't need you and I could have done it myself. Instead of just being grateful and thankful and saying, you know what, thank you. I appreciate that. I receive it. And so when we understand that because of his love, what he's given us and what he's provided for us, we also identify this year that God's not angry at us. God's not mad at us. He's not holding our sins against us because all of our sins have been forgiven. What? Past, present, and future. And so therefore, the condemnation and the guilt that we've been holding against ourselves when we mess up, we think God feels the same way. And God said, I ain't got nothing for you but what? Love. Blessings on blessings. Blessings on blessings. Blessings. Because we have a new covenant. And so we can't relate and deal with God under the old contract. Amen. We got the new contract. It's been upgraded. Amen. We got the Michael Jordan contract. It come with the endorsements. Amen. It come with all the benefits. See, and, and you trying to operate out of that, out, out of that old scrub con, contract. When God then gave you the Michael Jordan endorsement. See, God is a God that has provided before we needed the provision. But we just didn't know it. But now that we know it, now we have to identify and understand how do we receive it? See, now it all makes sense because when he says that, you know, we're more than conquerors, we're the head and not the tail. That the battle belongs to him, but the victory is ours. Now it all makes sense because we don't fight for the battle. What do we fight for? We fight from victory. So we go straight to victory and we, we, we claim victory and we say, you know what? I'm here. I already got it. And the enemy is going to try to take it from you. And that's the battle and that's the fight. So for those that say, you know what? I've tried it, but it's not working for me. We need to go back and reexamine and take another look at it and look at how are we functioning and what are we doing. You know, we've been having some powerful testimonies. You know, Sister Ashley gave us an awesome testimony last uh, week. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring Sister Sandra up here. She's going to share um, just a little bit of her testimony. But she had called me in Providence last week and was sharing some things with us. And I said, you know what? Wow, that's exactly what I'm going to be ministering <laughs> on this week. And so I said, you know, can you just share some of that testimony? Because she began to say some things on that phone that let me know that she she really got it. Yeah. She really got it. So come on, come on up. Give her a hand. Amen. As she comes, she's just going to share um, with us. Amen. Can, can we get her a microphone, team? Uh, we want to make sure our live stream people can can uh, hear this. OK, thank you. She's got the green green mic there. Good morning, family, and Facebook. First thing I want to start by saying is take your hand off the door. <laughs> take your hand off the door when God's involved. I don't even know where to begin, but since we've been apostle and er Elder Juan and every one of our leaders have been teaching on the revelation of God's love, it just truly... The, since January, I mean, in COVID, in December, my family got hit with COVID. The twins were born via COVID. You know, they the enemy was trying to speak things into our Lexi Marie and into myself. And I just, as these messages came forth, I'm like, God, you need to speak. You need to show me something. I need to know it in a different way. And be careful what you ask for. Because just several times he just wrecked me and I'm just in my house or in my car or I'm at work and he just wrecks me and he's like you've been listening to the lies of the enemy for 60 years when are you going to listen to me and when are you going to stop trying to figure it out and just receive you believe you believe I got it on my car I got it everywhere I got it in my house but he said, it's time for you, daughter, to receive, to receive it. Not just Sandra, but he's speaking to all of us. And I just got so desperate to share it and hunger and thirst and fast and just desperate. I don't want to go out 2022. He spoke it, that it's a new year. 
But many of us, for myself, I got trying to make this short for I didn't know a father's love. My dad was not in the picture. I had a stepdad that stepped in, blessed us, but an apostle came into my life. Different, you know, men of God came into my life, but it was truly the God, love of God that just spoke to me and just started speaking and healing and restoring and speaking like miracles. So going back to Lexi Marie and Levi David, the doctors were saying, you know, gastro this and she's this and breathing and heart issues. And God, before the twins were born, I had certain scriptures and I asked a few of the, my sisters to stand with it. And God just kept saying, whose report do you believe? So I went to James 1 and 17. Every good and perfect thing that comes down from the Father of lights. There's no variance. There's no bad report. There's nothing. Take your hand off the door. Lexi has been to the University of Michigan several times. We just stand and, and they kept trying to, you know, she's a fixed aspirating. No, she's not. She's good and perfect. Take your hands off. And I started fighting with the devil. Devil, take your hands off my family, my Rivers family, my children. Well, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, Lexi Marie went to the last appointment, the last appointment at U of M, and they confirmed what the Lord has been speaking. Every good and perfect thing will calm down. They said to the, the people that can be so smart can say some really stupid things. I'm sorry, but they said, she's a normal kid. She can have a normal life. And Amanda shared that with me. And I said, no, she's not. God has said she's perfect. She is going to go on and do miracles, signs, and wonders. Those twins were given to you. Raylene Grace and all those twins, the Lord said, are going to be instrumental. Mama Selena also confirmed this in bringing the parents into the kingdom. So all I can say the enemy tried to speak three bankruptcies in my life. This week, I've been at my employer four years. I got a raise. And we usually do these little minuscule raises and different things. But they sat me down, and I was just praying, God, I need to see more. I need to see what you're speaking. I got a raise three times what they normally do. Three times. No more bankruptcies. When the God speaks freedom... Freedom, take your hands off the door because it's not just for me, but what I shared with Apostle and Prophetess is he is speaking to each and every one of us. We can't just believe it. We can't be just lip service. We can't stand here at this altar, folks, and ask for him. He's in need of us. Look around at this world that we live in. This world is perishing because people don't have the knowledge of God's love. Oh, they hear about it but they need to believe and receive. So I pray that blessing over Apostle today on his birthday because I've been in this ministry with you all 13 years. And if he can do it for me, I promise you, I promise you, he can do it for you, grandchildren, children, family, restoration. You spoke on it, Elder Juan, the restoration when you hit that prayer, and that's really what the Lord wants to do. Take your hand off the door, folks, and receive the Jesus. love of God in Jesus' name. And, and tell us about the car. Oh, oh, forgot. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I am now 60 years old. Feel like 30 years old. Kind of look like I'm 30. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> But God, like I said, coming out of what the lies of the enemy, we've all been there, homeless, cancer, just, I won't even go into the rest of it. But driving just these brokety, yokety cars all my life. A couple years ago, the Lord placed a car in my life. He blessed me with a co-signer. And I kept saying, Lord, it's time. You keep promising me. You keep promising me. You keep promising so I reached out to Honda and Henry. They're wonderful people. Gage Hearns is an angel from God. And I said, you know, it's been a couple years. I've been working. The Lord's been showing me. 
a week ago, something about Wednesdays, y'all. A week ago Wednesday, I went down there. My credit is awesome. No longer need a co-signer. Thank you to that angel of God. I am now driving a 2022 Honda HRV in my name. Thanks to the Lord. Thanks come to on, the Lord. Come on now. And come what on. was funny is the the payment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but when I got the car, the payment was a little more than what I'm used to. What I'm used to. So then this past Wednesday, I get the news about Lexi, and I'm elated. I mean, she. She's coming here Mother's Day is all I can say. Her and Levi David amen, and Amen. Raylan. We're having baby dedication, so that's yeah, the perfect, perfect we need time. it. We definitely do. But I received a raise, and they told me that you are such a value and an asset to our company because I go back and forth, Muskegon, this and You are going to go places in this company. And that isn't what they said, but that is what God said. Come on. But God. So within a month, just since, just since January, God is just saying to us all, take your hands off the door and receive the love of God because we are going to see, not just me, not just Ashley, but we all are going to see miracle signs and wonders. Come when on, give the Lord some our hands shout of off praise. The door, y'all. Woo! See, come on, come on, come on, somebody. You know, I always say this. I can, I can eat just as much birthday cake at your party as I can mine. What you celebrate, you attract. I said, what you celebrate, you attract. What you celebrate, you attract. Somebody celebrate that this morning. Come on, come on. Celebrate what the Lord is doing in her life. What you celebrate, you attract. You attract that favor. God bless you. You can have your seat. You know, God is doing such an awesome work. I mean, we were sitting in that office, I, I don't know, what, five years ago, going over your bankruptcy stuff, putting together strategy to pay off stuff. And, and I told her, I said, Sandra, you need a business. So Sandra started a business. And, I mean, she just got so much going on that she was telling me the other day that the, that the company, when she get done working a regular job, then she shift over and put on the entrepreneur hat, and then they paying her to clean the building for a cleaning business. I said, now that's favor. Because we talked about America is set up for entrepreneurs. You got to have a business, amen? People look and wonder why they paying taxes. That's it because you don't have no business. I'm talking about the love of God. The awesome part about her testimony is she said, I finally get it. She said that the negative reports kept coming on her grandchildren, but she, she refused to receive them. And she told her daughter, don't receive that. That is not her, her, her portion. And so now, because they have a praying, believing grandmother, they're seeing the miraculous power of God take a diagnosis, amen, and now transform it into a place where now the child is perfect. Why? Because she received that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, amen, and there is no variances. There's no shadow. There's nothing shady that God gives us, amen. But it, it, it is perfect. And so... We need to stop receiving the negative reports. Amen. That when we're believing for something, all of a sudden the enemy throws something else in there and then we quit and give up because we're like, this is not working. But when you have a revelation of his love and how much he loves you and how he has already provided. And even though it may look one way in the natural and you hold fast to the promise of his word in the realm of the spirit, all of a sudden you see a transformation begin to take place in the natural that turns that thing that seems to be devastating into a blessing. Into a blessing. Amen. Let's, get into our message today because we got 
man, we got some stuff to cover. Look at 1 John chapter 4, verse number 18. I was, I was studying this yesterday, and the Lord was just ministering to me about this. It says, 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love, love has the ability to just enforce an authority over fear. Because fear hath what? Torment. Now, as I begin to meditate on this, I begin to think, and then the Lord said, think about that word. Look up that word torment. That word torment in the Greek, the Greek key 2849, it means penal, affliction, punishment. And I began to think and I was saying, God, that means that it's not our portion because you became the propitiation, the go between. You took the punishment. You took a man, the the judgment. You took and you pleaded guilty for me so that I would not have to go through it. So therefore, that's not my portion. And so because fear is torment, it is punishment, that declares that that's not your portion. So whenever fear manifests or comes into your life, the automatic reaction should be to just reject it and understand that that is not from God. It is not my portion because Jesus carried that fear. The scripture tells us that I've not given you what? But I've given you what? Power, love, and a sound mind. So number one, he's telling us, I've given you power, the, the, the ability to now drive it out. I've also given you love because there is no fear in love. And I've given you a sound mind that you won't be unstable, but you'll have an understanding and know what you're dealing with and what's happening. There are so many areas in our life where the enemy wants to bring fear and torment us. We're living in a day in a society with, especially with the COVID, that there's been so much fear that is rampantly released in the earth. You know, the war that's going on in Ukraine and everything that's happening with the inflation and prices going, going, going up. And then we got, you know, the, the Federal Reserve, they're coming, hiking up interest rates because, you know, they want to, you know, try to, you know, hedge, you know, inflation and nobody understands what's going on. Fear is ringing rapid. But God says where the fear abounds, how much more does my love abound? My grace. Because when we talk about grace, we're talking about the love of God. Because we learned that grace is what? Grace is simply everything that God has already done. Grace is. Is, is, is implication of the provision that has been allowed for us. And we talked about that. That grace gives us space. It gives us, gives us room. And so as God begins to bring a revelation that there can be no fear in love, and so what happens is the more that we begin to grow in God's love, the, the, the more power and authority that we begin to walk in because fear has no power. It cannot enter our life. It cannot dominate our life. It can't come and intimidate you. It can't come and intimidate you and say, look, you have to do this. You have to submit to this. You have to take this because if you don't, I'm going to do this. And oftentimes we get intimidated and we bow to fear because we don't understand God's love. And God is saying, I'm, I will always be right there with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will always be right there with you. See, and the beautiful thing about what God has done in our life is he's given us authority. He's given us what? Authority. He said to his disciples, I've given you authority to tread over scorpions and serpents. I've given you authority, amen, to function and operate and do according as I've done. The works that I do, I expect you to do and greater. So God's given us the authority to move signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll lay hands on the sick and, and what will happen? They'll recover. We expect them to recover. That is authority. But what happens is we need to understand 
that authority is designed to enforce law. And we deal in a world, in a society where everything functions and works and based upon law. There are natural laws, laws of the land, but there are spiritual laws. And what we learn is that spiritual laws always supersede what? Natural laws. Just like we have natural courts, amen, we have the Supreme Court and we've been, uh, you know, watching, amen, as a new, you know, Katanji has been, you know, uh, 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 nominated, amen, as a new Supreme Court representative. But there is a court in heaven that's higher than that court. It is called the court of the ancient of days, meaning it's been established. It has been there forever. It sets precedence over every court in this earthly realm. And there is a judge. He sets and he rules upon that court. Oh, yes. Woo! The ancient of days. He rules. He's the judge and, and the jury. And sometimes we have to learn to take something to a higher court. Understand that God's given us authority, but the authority must enforce law. See, and this is what happens. Let me, let me make this simple to you. That just because you have authority doesn't mean that everything is going to just work out for you. The same way that a police officer has authority, but that don't mean that people are going to stop committing crimes, right? <laughs> that don't mean the folk ain't going to run from you. People ain't going to break in houses. People ain't going to break in cars. They have to enforce the authority that they've been given. See, and this is what happens in the kingdom of God, that God's given you authority. But don't you think for one minute the enemy's not going to attack your family. He's not going to attack your children. He's not going to attack your business. He's not going to attack your uh, a body. Amen. He's going to attack but if we recognize that we have authority and that we've been commissioned and called and appointed, amen, to enforce that authority, that's what we're doing. Because we understand that we have been sent. The word apostolic means to be sent to enforce the authority by the law, by legal means. See, we can't do it illegally. We can't put on a fake cop out outfit and go out and start pulling people over because we know folk that have done that. It don't end very well. But you got the real deal, baby. You've got the real deal. You've been endorsed by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Who has set you on high. Matter of fact, the scripture said that we're seated in heavenly places next to our big brother, Jesus. Seated above every principality, every power, every throne, every world ruler, every dominion. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace whenever we need to. That we may obtain mercy because sometimes we mess up and we need mercy. But God said, that's OK. I still got you. Because Jesus has paid the price. Authority enforces law. See. And we have to understand these laws. One of the biggest laws that we need to, to, to understand and operate in is the law of faith. Is the law of what? Faith. Because faith works by love. You know, look at Mark chapter 5, verse 25. It says, and there was a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years that she was uh, profusely bleeding. And had suffered many things of many physicians, meaning she had went to all different types of doctors and no, none of the doctors could fix it. And had spent all that she had. She, she, she had exhausted her financial means. See, and this is what happens with us a lot of times. Because we don't have a relationship with God, God becomes our last and final source. Well, I didn't try everything else, so let me try God. But that doesn't mean, amen, that she couldn't have went there first and got what she needed. But God had to bring her to a place of humility because she didn't know God. Amen. She didn't trust God. But she had obviously heard that there was a man named Jesus who was healing people. And it activated faith on the inside of her. And it says, and she sent all that she spent, all that she had and was nothing 
bittered, battered, but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind him, meaning that there were many people that were surrounding him. And what she did is she crawled and got down on her knees. And the Bible says that she touched the hem of his garment. She touched the hem, the bottom of his garment. And when she touched the bottom of his garment, power came out of Jesus because she had made a confession of faith. And in the mix of it, Jesus said, who touched me? Not physically, but somebody touched him in the realm of the spirit that now was able to, to pull and receive the power that was in him out of him. Yeah. She released the confession of her faith in relationship to her ability to be able to receive. It says in straight way, the fountain of her blood dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that very plague instantly at that very moment. Now look at verse 30. Jesus said immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in, in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, you see all the multitude uh, pressing up against you and thronging you. What do you mean? What are you saying? Who touched you? He said, who touched me? He stopped everything. And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, thy faith. What made her whole? She tapped into the law of faith, hath made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of this plague. She tapped into a law called faith. See, something that I always say, and I want you to confess it because you need to make it of, of your own. Faith supersedes facts. Faith will always supersede facts. Facts are going to come. And sometimes you get facts and then you turn around and you get worse facts. And then you may turn around, you may get a third layer of facts, but it doesn't matter because as long as you hold fast to the faith that you have, faith will always supersede facts. It was a fact that she spent all she had. It was a fact that she had went to every doctor that she would go to. It was a fact that doctor, doctors told her that there's no cure for you. There's nothing that we can't do. I don't understand it. It was a fact. But when she heard about a man and it activated the law of faith on the inside of her, she said, if I could just touch the hem of this man's garment, I would be made whole. And the law of faith, bam. It was executed and it happened. See, what happened with us is that we would have quit a long time ago and said, you know what? This don't work. It's not working for me. You know, I heard Sister Sandra's testimony. You know, I heard, you know, Sister Ashley's testimony. You know, I heard, you know, Prophetess Wanda's testimony, but, but it's not working for me. Maybe you don't get it like you think you're getting it. Maybe you don't understand like you think you understand. See, when you connect and you hold fast to a certain law, laws do not change. They do not shift based on circumstance. See, the law of gravity doesn't uh, uh, change, amen, because you're special, because you're anointed, because you're saved, amen. The law of gravity, amen, it'll impact you as well as it'll impact me. Laws never change. But what happens sometimes we vary. Sometimes we doubt. Sometimes we change. See, Jesus honestly didn't know who had touched him. Mm -mm -mm. And when you tap into these spiritual laws, the power of God just shows up. It just shows up. It just shows up. Because your natural mind will tell you, you know, this doesn't make sense. But we don't listen to our natural mind because we understand that the natural mind is an enmity against God. It fights the very nature of the spiritual law. God is a spirit. And therefore, the things that God tells us and gives us in the word that he gives us are spiritual laws and spiritual principles. And they do not come into alignment with natural laws. They are designed to supersede natural laws. 
And so if you're basing things based on, on, on natural things like how you feel or the report that came out from a physician or a doctor and all these things, you're basing whether something can happen or whether it cannot happen. If you're basing it based upon the statistics, amen, of what has statistically occurred in this situation has been 97 percent failure. None of that matters. <laughs> because it just means 97 percent of the people didn't know God. They didn't function and operate in God's laws. See, as a believer, we need to find out what those laws are and begin to cooperate with those laws. Come into alignment with the laws of God. And as you learn to cooperate with and enforce these laws, you'll see God's provision for your life. When we learn to come into alignment and cooperate with these laws, all of a sudden, bam, we'll see God's provision begin to come. See, understanding that God has already done what we need to have done. See, but most of us have been taught wrong. We've been taught to pray for something that you don't have, that God will give it to you. That's wrong. The truth of the matter is God's word tells you if you need healing in your body, healing has already been given and provided to you. Because if if that's not true, then that means that Isaiah lied when he prophesied it. That means that Peter lied when he spoke it in 1 Peter 2, 23, when he said, by his stripes, you were healed. Isaiah said, by his stripes, we are healed. So that means that he's already provided the very thing that we need even before we needed it. That's how much he loves us. See, that's what we're coming into the revelation of, that he is a God that has given us provision before we even needed the provision. I've already thought about that, planned it, and thought it through. I got that. See, and when you get a revelation that of, of a God that loves you that much, that he is now preordained and preplanned and provided everything that you need before you needed it, all of a sudden you start to fall in love with him and begin to discover how much he cares and how much he's concerned about your future. And you start to come out of agreement with all the lies that the enemy will tell you that, you know, God is favored and he did it for them. But, you know, he didn't do it for you because you're a terrible person and because you keep making mistakes and you keep messing up. You'll no longer believe those lies. See, the word clearly reveals that God's already healed us. But we have to yet take advantage of it. We have to enforce, we have to enforce our right to receive that healing. We have to enforce that law the same way that, amen, the police may have to enforce a situation to, to, to go in now and take authority and take back something that someone stole from you. You have to enforce it. Because sometimes it'll freely flow, it'll freely come, but then sometimes that thing will be hindered, and then you got to go in and enforce that authority in the realm of the Spirit by operating and cooperating with the law. Now, look at 1 John 5, 14. 1 John 5, 14 says it like this. And this is the confidence. Somebody say what? This is the confidence. Now, now I want to know what he's about to say because you know what? I need some confidence. This is the confidence <laughs> that we have in him that if we ask easy stuff that If we ask things that are easily to believe, if we ask things that are in our own power or our ability, he said, if we ask anything, that's a blank check. That's a blank check. That's a blank check right there. See, it's certain scriptures that God, God, God just give you a blank check. God just say, where, where's your faith? I'm not going to limit you. 
You just write in what you think you're worth. <laughs> just fill in what you think you're worth. My signature is on it. I, I've already endorsed it. The only thing that ain't filled in, amen, is how much you're worth. See, it's certain scriptures that are blank checks. See, and some of us ain't never got a blank check before. We like, well, are you, you know, I, I don't know what to put in there. He said, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, is it his will to, for us to be healed? Is it his will for our family to be saved? Is it his will for us to prosper? Then you're good. Fill in the check. Fill in the check. You know, but we've been taught, you know, how the old religious church is. Well, if it's the Lord's will. If it's the Lord's will. No, we don't have to ask, is it his will? He then gave us 66 books to know what his will is. Read the contract. Read the contract. Find out what his will is. He said, I delight in the prosperity of my people. He said, it, it is my will. It is my good pleasure to bless you. It is my will that none shall perish, but all shall come into the light. Jesus, come on. We can ask anything as long as it's according to his will. And baby, when you got something that you believe in God for and you know it's according to his will, you got to have the bulldog tenacity, the unadulterated audacity to not let go, to hold on to that thing. Amen. To just lock in. Amen. And not let go no matter what the circumstances, no matter what happens, no matter what it looks like, amen, no matter what arises against you, amen, the, the word of the Lord said, David said like this, do a thousand fall at my right hand and ten thousand at my left hand, I will not be moved. Moses said it like this, amen, when you've done all that you can to stand, he said, just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And watch God begin to move in your life. This is why it's not working for you. Because we haven't learned to stand. And when you understand the fact that he loves you, amen, and he's already provided and he got your back. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be with you. I got goodness and mercy, amen, that's right there with you. I got the angels surrounding you and camped about you. I got a head of the protection over you. All you got to do is stand. You got to learn to stand against what the enemy is saying. Stand against what the report is, the evil report. Stand against the evil report over your body. Stand against the evil report over your children, over your seed, over your destiny, over your purpose, over your business. Stand. My God. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Take your seat. Take your seat. Look at, look at verse 15. He said, we ask. The final part said, he will hear us. He will hear us because oftentimes when things ain't happening, you think, God, did you hear me? Are you hearing me? Are you there? This is the confidence. You don't have to worry about whether he heard you or not. He heard you. He heard you. See, when you understand the love that God has for you, there is no doubt. Amen. That he heard you. Even Jesus said one time that God spoke audibly to the to the people. He said he just spoke loud so that you will know. He said, it wasn't for me because I know that he hears me. Look at, look at verse 16. It says, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So what he's illustrating here is that the enemy will attack your faith and your ability to believe that God heard you. 
See, and oftentimes, if we don't know the love that he has for us, <laughs> we'll sometimes doubt whether he heard us or not. We'll sometimes doubt whether he heard us or not. Oh, believe us. See, now, I'm, I'm about to twist this on you. He heard you before you even spoke because he already provided the answer before you needed the answer. See, God is a God that heard you even before you spoke. So the confidence is the, the, the revelation that he loved you so much that he provided what you needed before you even spoke out what you needed. And so now it is just the word that is now moving to carry out and to manifest the very thing that you need. You caught that, didn't you? <laughs> See, when we know the love that he has for us, see, God is not hearing us in the now for our provisions. Why? Because our provisions have already been taken care of in the past. It's the grace of God. See, that's how God functions. God, God ordains provision before he ordained you. He took five days creating everything that you would need. He created the atmosphere. He created oxygen. He created, you know, carbon monoxide. He created the trees. He created the celestial stars. He set them in, in the heavens. He took five days dealing with your provision. And then he said on the sixth day, okay, let me create my masterpiece and set him in it with dominion and power and give him authority. Whatever he calls it, that's what it is. And on the seventh, seventh day, he rested. He sat on his throne and sat back and let me, let me watch this thing and see how he's going to function and operate in it. See, Jesus came and gave us all that back and more. He gave all that back and more. Woo! My goodness. Man, I'm going to give you a couple more scriptures. Oh, this is so, so good. Look at 1 Corinthians 4, verse 13. First Corinthians 4, <clears throat> verse 13. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Look, it's, it's in 2 Corinthians 4.13. I got the wrong, wrong one. 2 Corinthians 4.13. He said, we having the same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak here's the key what happens is when the pressure of facts begin to mount up against you it forces you and the natural nature to begin to speak out negativity this is one of the main reasons why it's not working for you because when things get worse or when there's a, a, a change in something and you, you've been having faith and you believe in and then all of a sudden a setback comes. And you get frustrated and you say, God, why isn't it working? Who told you it wasn't working? Who told you it wasn't working? We've just received and believe all of a sudden shifted and, and communicated to ourselves it wasn't working. Because we're basing whether it's working or not based upon natural indicators or natural facts. Not upon the word of God and his will. And we've negated. So what happens when we doubt God is we're literally saying, God, you really don't love me. 
It's like a daughter who's been abandoned by the father and says, where were you? You were supposed to be there to protect me, but you abandoned me. You knew I was born, but you never looked for me. You never sought after me. But God is not like that. God is a God that protects us, that has, has provided for us. That has given us promises that I will always be there. I will always be with you. So no matter what the circumstance, what the situation is, he's able to fix it. See, he had to prove that to Mary, didn't he? When she came and, and they were saying, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't, dead, wouldn't, wouldn't have died. He didn't even deal with that. He, he just came and he said, you know what? Roll away the stone. Because in their mind, they had saw Jesus do many miracles. They had saw Jesus do many miracles. But not like this. He was dead four days. Now, we didn't see you raise somebody from the dead that just died a couple hours ago. But this man was, in, you know, he was embalmed. He was wrapped, amen, in mummy's clothes, put in a tomb, and the body was stinking. But Jesus didn't even deal with that foolishness. He just said, roll away the stone. Roll away the stone. And what did he do? He spoke. He believed, therefore, he what? He spoke. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And I bet when he came, came up, you know, he came up like this. And it shook everybody because they were saying, what manner of man is this? See, this is the church that God is raising up in this hour. This is what he was prophesying this morning. This is what he was speaking this morning. See, because if you can believe him for these little, Paul called them light afflictions that you're dealing with in your own life then we can move on to something that, that, that is more excellent, more relevant. Jesus, come on. More meaningful, more purposeful. And we can begin to really get some stuff done. He said, we believe, therefore we speak. We speak that thing into existence. See, what you believe, you'll speak no matter what the situation is. See, you've got to be able to speak in the mix of the storm. You've got to be able to speak, amen, in an atmosphere of intimidation. Jesus, come on. You've got to be able to speak, amen, into uh, 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 that season when everything looks like it's not going to work out. See, this is what Jesus demonstrated and he taught us in the mix of the storm when they said, wake up. You know, we're about to die. We're about to perish. Jesus got up and went to the bow of the boat and he began to speak. And he said, peace, be still. And the storm ceased and it calmed and the, and the, and the sea calmed and the waves went down. And they said, what kind of manner of man is this? See, because when we understand the authority, then now we have no problem with enforcing the authority, even though it may seem to be unorthodox or unusual or strange because other people aren't enforcing the authority. See, the reason we don't enforce the authority is because we really don't believe that we have the authority. Because we just say things like, God, if you don't fix this, I don't know what I'll do when he's called you to fix it. We say, God, I don't, I, you know, I don't understand why you didn't heal them because he's called you to heal them. Come on, we say, God, I don't know why you didn't save them because he's called you to save them. See, we've been taught to pray that God would do, and God said, I commissioned and called you to do. I told you to lay hands on the sick. I told you to go into all nations and, and teach and make disciples. I told you to raise the dead. I told you to cast out devils. I told you to open the eyes of the blind. I told you, amen, to cause the cripple to walk. But we have to receive it. And if we can't speak it, we'll never be able to receive it. So it starts with the ability for us to be able to open our mouth. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21 says it like this. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. 
a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. What you speak out of your mouth and begin to release and decree and begin to say, I don't care how it looks. Amen. I don't care how bad it looks, but you begin to speak out of your mouth the things that you want. The Bible says that God is the God that speak those things that are not as though they already were. So he calls an empty bank account full. He calls a sick person healed. He calls an unhealthy marriage healthy. He speaks those things that are not as though they were. And it says, with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit of. So if you love death, you love evil things, you love uh, 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 skulls and crossbones and scorpions, guess what? Amen. You're going to attract those things into your life. But if you love God's word, you love truth, you love peace, you love prosperity, you love order. Guess what? Those are the things that you begin to attract because you're speaking them out of your mouth. Our problem is when we get frustrated, we speak what we don't want and we manifest, amen, even a greater manifestation of the things that we don't want. When God's called us to ascertain the ability that when we get frustrated, now we turn up the, the, the heat speaking what we do want. The Bible says he called light out of where? Darkness. Did he see light in darkness? Obviously he did. It wasn't there, but he commanded it to come forth. See, it doesn't make sense to call light out of darkness. The same way that the woman in Mark 5 said, if I may touch but his clothes, I'll be made whole. Words release either death or they release what? Life. You can't speak death out of your mouth and then expect to receive life. We say, you know what, it's, it's not working for me, but what have you been speaking the last week after you ran into the, the opposition? You abandoned and you gave up and you quit because you thought that it was not working. You didn't know if God heard you or not. Faith flows through words. Faith flows through words. Faith flows through words. Because words create action and progress. Words create images. And images create substance and circumstance. So if I say the white dog chased the red ball as he crossed the street and the FedEx truck rapidly sped by, you just saw the motion picture, didn't you? Yeah. What was the logo on the FedEx truck? What color was it? <laughs> Purple and orange. You saw the color, didn't you? Was it anything about the color in my words? No. But because you were familiar with that, you saw it, and it put something visually in motion. And what is in motion in the spirit now comes into motion in the natural realm because faith functions by words. It is a law of the spirit. That's one of the second laws that I want to tell you about. It's the power of words. Faith functions by words. Faith functions by words. Fear is also elevated by words. Fear is also elevated by words. See, because you can go to the doctor and the doctor says, uh, the, the report just came back and uh, I hate to tell you this, but... Um, we see that there is a, uh, a tumor. We've sent it out for an examination, and it is cancerous. Automatically, what happens? Fear just grips that person because of what was spoken. But when you believe like we believe, you say, you know what? I don't receive that. I don't receive that. See, and... For many, that would be, well, that's just, you know, that's just ignorant. That just doesn't make sense. That just, 
you know, that's that's absurd. You just, you know, you're just being evasive. You just you just don't want to deal with the issue. You don't want to deal with the problem. You just think that you can ignore it and it will go away. No, but when you know who you serve and you know the authority and the power that you have to enforce a spiritual law against a natural situation, all of a sudden change begins to come upon the scene. And you begin to tell the doctor you're going to see a miracle. And then when the miracle occurs, now it becomes a witness and a testimony of those that doubted and did not believe. See, words release either death or life. But your ignorance of the law doesn't mean that the law is going to change. See, our ignorance of the law doesn't mean that the law is going to change. Ignorance is not an excuse. How many, how many know that? Ignorance is not an excuse. When you say, you know what, well, I didn't know I was breaking the law, but you broke the law. And you still have to deal with the circumstances of what occurred. See, your ignorance doesn't exempt you. See, and there's certain spiritual laws that you haven't understand and learn how to enforce. And that's why you're suffering for breaking those laws and not adhering to those laws. But now, you, amen, you're being held accountable because we're talking about the law. Amen. I, I, I talked about a law this morning. It's the law of attraction. What you celebrate, you attract. God taught me that a long time ago. People that had things, amen, that I desired it, and I you know, felt like you know, these people just have them, they're blessed, and I don't know why I don't have, and then now you're jealous and envious, but then God said, celebrate that. When somebody else is blessed, learn to celebrate that. Learn to, to, to send a comment. Learn to celebrate somebody else. Learn to celebrate somebody else's children, amen, when they're doing better than your children. Because you know what? What you celebrate, you attract. It's a law of attraction. See, when you sit there and you're angry and you're frustrated and you feel like, well, you know, I don't have anything to celebrate. Who told you that celebration was all about celebrating you or, or when something good happens? The scripture says rejoice in all things. James even tells us this. He said, rejoice when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. He said, having the knowledge and wisdom and knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And that patience, amen, may begin to endure. And when you're done and you're finished, you'll be wanting and lacking nothing. So I consider it a joy to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To celebrate and say, thank you, Lord, for choosing me to be able to go through what I'm going through right now. Because when it's over and when it's done and when it's finished, man, how powerful of a testimony is it going to be to impact and empower other people? But nobody likes it when they're going through it, but it's a fruit of the spirit. I want to close with this. Look at Romans 10, 6. Romans 10 and 6 says it like this. Amen. This is my birthday message today. <laughs> Romans 10 and 6. But the righteous, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. So what he's saying is that the righteous, they speak. Faith speaks, which is of faith speaks. So the righteous, see, here's, here's another thing. We learn that we're righteous even though we don't feel righteous. <laughs> How many when they woke up said, you know what, I just feel righteous this morning. But how many know that you're made righteous because of what he did? So he paid the price. You might as well receive it, right? Yeah. See, you not accepting righteousness is like going to dinner with someone and they say, you know what? I'm going to take care of the bill. And you say, no, I can't let you do that. And you're fighting with them. And they say, no, 
I've already paid it. And, you, and you're like, no, no, uh-uh. No, I'm going to go tell them to refund that. <laughs> he made you righteous. You might as well just receive it. Well, I don't feel right about it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's paid for. He paid the price for your righteousness. See, we've been dealing with too many natural laws. Spiritually, he's made us righteous. And the scripture tells us, but the righteous which is of faith, are you of faith? Speaks. So faith speaks. God's word says that faith speaks. God created these laws and he doesn't just suspend them. He doesn't ever suspend them because somebody, you know what, you don't quite got it. So uh, it's, it's not going to work for you. See, the same law that will help you if you cooperate with it will also kill you if you violate it. The same law. You know, my mom used to say this all the time when I was little. She said, the word will save you or it'll keep you. She said, son, it's just like water. Water will sustain your life and save you. But if I take your head and press it down and refuse you oxygen, the same thing that will save your life will kill you. She said, the fire that's burning in that furnace right now that's, that's heating and warming this, this house will save you in the debt of winter. But if I take your head and stick it in it, it'll kill you. And the problem is, is we don't understand that there's some things that if they're not utilized correctly. So we have to utilize God's word correctly. We have to utilize laws correctly. We have to implement laws correctly. Because if we don't, they will work against us and they will destroy us. Electricity. Is, is another one. It'll kill us. It'll, it'll electrify us. But at the same time, it'll allow us to enjoy the pleasures of, of light and, and you know, visual exposure to see each other. It'll run automobiles. But you step in a pool of water and you stick electric wire into it, it'll shock you and kill you. It's the same way with the spiritual realm. The reason that it's not working for some of us is because we haven't understood, number one, the authority that we've been given. Number two, that that authority requires that we take responsibility to enforce the laws. You know, I like the word responsibility because it's your response to the ability that he's given you. What is your response to the ability that he's given, given you? He's given you the ability. But what is your response to it? It's like Jesus saying to someone, rise and walk. If they never made the effort to get up and walk, they would never walk. What is your appropriation of faith to God's word? What is your response to the ability, to the provision that he has given. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a, a praise for this, for this word today. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I want you to bow your head. I want to just pray for you this morning. There's some things that some of us have been believing for. And we've not seen the results. We've become frustrated. We've become angry with God. Some of us have blamed God. We've blamed ourselves. Some of us just don't even know. We're just frustrated. And if that's you, I, 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 I want to pray for you today. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. But I want to pray that that thing would be broken that God's love would be revealed to you today, that you understand that God loves you, he has provided for you. The answer has already been given. And if that's you, if you want that prayer, you, you want that, that favor, that grace, that anointing released over you today, I want you to just raise your hand. 
where, wherever you are, I'm not going to call you up. Just, 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 just raise your hand. I see those hands. Amen. God sees those hands. Father, I pray today that the revelation of your love be revealed unto us in a greater way. Father, as we open our hearts, we ask, reveal your love to us, God. Show us through your word, through your scripture, how much you loved us and how you have already preordained and pre-provided for the very things that we need already before we need them. Give us a revelation, God, of how you don't just hear us, but how you've already heard us. And because we know that you heard us, Father God, we will now begin to just speak in agreement with that that we desire, the desired outcome. We will not relent. We will not turn back. But, Lord, we will celebrate you for the victory even before the victory comes because you have given us the victory already. We understand that the battle belongs to you and that sometimes, Lord, things that we're dealing with, they take time and patience. And we will not doubt that you're not working because we know that you're a good, good father. We know, Lord, that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We'll not doubt. But, Lord, when we've done all that we know to do to stand, Lord, we'll just continue to stand and wait patiently for the outcome as we stand in faith, God. And Lord, as we stand, we'll just continue to speak. And Father, I pray for a grace to speak into the storm today. I release a boldness, a Joshua boldness upon these people, God. I release that same anointing and that same grace that God spoke through, uh, 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 spoke over Joshua after Moses died. And he said that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you would meditate therein day and night, observing accordingly to do all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be strong and courageous. God, I release a spirit of courage over your people. I release courage through the at at atmosphere. I release courage, God, right now in the name of Jesus through this social media platform into homes, God, where everyone is, God, in the name of Jesus. I release courage to stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Father, we thank you for miracles Miracles for healing, miracles for financial breakthrough, God, miracles for those that are believing for their loved ones, miracles for those, God, that are believing for healing, miracles for those that are standing in faith, God, for those that are sick and in the hospital. God, we decree miracles are breaking loose. Miracles are breaking loose in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone in agreement said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise this, this morning. Come on up. Um, Sister Bonnie has some announcements. I want to say this as she's coming. Um, if you're in need of prayer, amen, maybe you're dealing with something that you know, we didn't deal with today. Uh, we will be here. The leaders will be at the altar to pray with you afterwards. We don't want anyone leaving, amen, without being able to receive um, just a personal touch from the Lord and uh, just come in agreement with prayer with you. Amen. God, God bless you, Sister Bonnie.